What's up everyone? Got another video for you guys. I ended up producing a second build angle gear for a friend and customer. His name's Rick. He has a Volvo 850 all wheel drive that he dirt races. He runs the car locked four wheel drive by welding the viscous coupler and he's had issues with the stock angle gear exploding on launch. So he wants to show his project a little bit, give a little bit of an introduction and show some racing. The angle gear has been working out very well for him so far. Uh, he set it up himself with a little bit of help from me and he did a fantastic job on setup and I'm really excited to show his progress and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. My build and angle gear is still holding up great and I haven't been having any issues and I figured having Rick test this and, and really load it up in the dirt would really help prove that this angle gear is very strong. So let's get right into the video, guys. Hey everyone, welcome uh, in my garage. Um, so I'm, I'm making this video for Matt. I'm actually one of the first customers for uh, the Hell Moose Performance Angle Gear. And um, I'm doing a little bit of testing and uh, I've just managed to, uh, to set it up and um, mounted it to the engine and the engine is ready uh, to go into the car. Um, so I just wanted to make a little video to, uh, to show you all my project. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, it will be helpful for others. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, look at the uh, at the engine. So we've got the engine sitting over here. It's a uh, five-cylinder Volvo turbo engine uh, T5 with um, double uh, variable uh, valve control. Um, it has a bunch of modifications. Um, it's built. It has forged rods, um, stock pistons, um, a different turbo. Um, an additional oil cooler, um, M58 gearbox with 445 final drive uh, from a V40. Um, the plan is to uh, to get it into this car. So this is uh, my uh, my race car. Um, we I, I compete in autocross, um, which unlike in the US is on uh, on dirt here. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look at uh, at the angle gear. So that's mounted here on the back. Um, so just below the turbo, um, I'm running a new uh, Garage G series type of turbo. Um, you can see that uh, the angle gear sits just below it. Like all the clearances are are pretty tight, but uh, but everything fits. Um, let's see. I'm uh, I'm also running like um, the tur the the turbo drain to this RNC uh, drain hole. Um, I made a new hole in the engine, um, tapped some threads into it um, using the old um, the stock uh, turbo drain as an extra uh, vent for the sump. Um, running um, yeah, this, this external oil cooler that we saw earlier. And so I have like a plate here to, uh, to mount the lines. Um, you can see that um, the angle gear clears everything really well. Um, I had to cut a little bit. Uh, I had to cut this tab away from the from the block in order to get it to fit. But um, other from, uh, apart from that, no clearance issues. Everything fits really, really great. Um, you can also see like just with the, the oil lines here, like I had to rotate them a little bit, but um, other than that, it's, it's a great fit. So yeah, as I as I said, um, the engine is, is is going into this car. Um, so this is like a pretty uh, pretty modified Volvo 850. There's not much stock. Um, so right now there's not uh, not much under the hood. You can see I have like a, a couple of uh, catch cans here, uh, pressure fuel pressure regulator over there. Um, I made some holes in the firewall, so I'm actually not running a radiator in the front of this car. Um, it's being used for the track racing, and I want to avoid um, getting the radiator getting filled up with dirt. So I'm only running uh, running the intercooler in the front, just like a, a standard um, DO88 intercooler for uh, for the Volvo 850. Made like a custom um, uh, custom uh, uh, shroud for it to, to mount the fan in. Um, pretty uh, pretty nice. So the oil cooler goes here. And um, I'm also uh, running these, uh, these this, this strut bar um, 
just to reinforce the chassis a little bit. Um, so this car will be running uh, permanent all-wheel drive. Um, the Fisco, uh, Fisco's coupler will be welded. Um, we can maybe also see a little bit of the interior of the car. So this is full race car, so it has a roll cage, six-point belt. Um, I also run like a modified um, steering um, mechanism, so I'm using electrical power steering. I have like a steering quickener in there so I can make turns really quickly. Um, like all the wiring in this vehicle is completely custom. I'm running this digital dash. I have like a turbo speed sensor which is really useful for, uh, for mapping the engine. Fire extinguisher, really important. Um, so in the back we have uh, an electrical water pump. I don't actually use the, the pump that's mounted to the engine. I, uh, I cut the blades off, so it's, it's just sitting there to route the belt. Um, batteries in the back of the car. Um, running this pretty, uh, pretty huge radiator that's from, uh, from a truck. Um, so this, uh, this will definitely be able to, uh, to keep the engine cool even uh, when you produce a lot of horsepower and since you're going through the dirt you may not have as much airflow going through the radiator as um, you might have on, on like a track um, but that should be uh, should be no problem for this thing in the back we uh, we have the fuel uh, fuel tank so nothing's mounted under the car anymore fuel tank like a small 20 liters tank and um, I'm just running like a Bosch 40, 044 um, inline fuel pump. Works great, has plenty of capacity for my engine. Um, if, I tr if I would ever move to a bigger turbo, I might have, had, might have to add a second one, but for now, uh, this, this works perfectly fine.
This is Rick. Um, it's Saturday. It's a week after uh, the race from last Saturday and uh, we're back in the garage and I just wanted to, uh, to talk a little bit about how the race went. Um, overall, I, uh, I think it went pretty well. Um, we faced a couple of technical issues that, uh, that I'll outline in a little bit, um, but no major parts broke and, uh, and after we fixed the technical issues, the, the car ran great. Um, so let's, uh, let's maybe take a quick look at uh, what we learned and what some of the issues were that we ran into. So I've checked the car up on, uh, on jack stands and um, as you can see it's a little bit more, uh, more dirty than before. Um, the car also uh, received a little bit uh, of a new color from, uh, from the impact with, uh, with the Audi. Um, fortunately nothing, nothing major broke. Um, I've already replaced um, a wheel hop on, uh, on this side, which bent with the impact. Um, we can maybe uh, take a quick look at that in a little bit. Um, so the, other, the, the rest of the car actually looks, looks fine. Um, so the issues that we ran into is um, during the first heat, um, I had set up like a um, check engine light check on uh, the TPS sensor. And what happened is that during the start, I uh, was going full throttle and um, the sensor reading was reading out of range, which caused the check engine light to be triggered. And um, that um, put like a rev limiter at 3000 RPM, which completely ruined my start and uh, basically the rest of the heat. One of the, uh, the other issues that I, uh, that I ran into is um, I had this, um, this uh, brake got stuck a little bit, which uh, caused a lot of heat generation and uh, probably uh, slowed me down a little bit. Um, I still have to fix that. Um, so it looks like the 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 brake, uh, the blocks are almost gone. I probably just need to replace them and clean the, the, the piston a little bit and then I think it will be fine. Um, I also, so this was the first time that I raced with the new PCV system. Um, so as you can see, uh, things got a little bit messy over here. Um, while the, the the left can is working fine, as it's collected to the old separator, the right can actually fills up in a single heat and then it starts blowing uh, blowing out um, oil um, through the top vent. Um, so I think I need to, uh, to fab fabricate some sort of drain here. Um, I'm thinking about making a drain from this can here to the dipstick uh, over here. Um, which will hopefully allow engine to be uh, or all all to be trained back into the engine. Um, I'm hoping that that will uh, will solve that issue. Um, I also had an issue where um, actually I probably didn't torque some of the the bolts on the, on the crank pulley correctly, so the, some of the bolts came loose and then uh, this belt came off. I've already uh, replaced it. Um, fortunately, the pulley didn't come off entirely. Um, because that would have ruined the engine. Um, so I'm, I made sure to retorque everything into spec and now that should be fine. I also just want to, uh, to take a quick look at the, uh, the angle gear. Um, so the angle gear is here in the back. Um, I'm hoping you can actually see it. Um, fortunately that did hold up great. Um, I put like the launch control at 3500 RPM and then launched the car. Um, that did, uh, didn't, didn't run into any issues, like all the launches went great. Um, the angle gear held up, like the entire uh, transmission um, worked flawlessly. So that I'm really happy about that. Um, I'm, I, also, I had also replaced the final drive in the gearbox, so I can actually shift a bit earlier into third gear now. That seemed to have worked really great. Um, one other issue that uh, that we ran into, and this was probably a bit stupid, is um, I had replaced all these intercooler pipes for like a shorter um, rip kit kind of system, but um, I probably didn't tighten the hose clamp of the black bottom hose correctly, and it ca actually came off during one of the heats. Um, and that, yeah, at the, from the point that it came off, um, the car wasn't making more than half a bar of boost anymore. Um, which caused a lot of power, obviously. Um, but fortunately, that's something that we did find after uh, after the second heat. 
we fixed that and uh, and uh, and then all the power was back and the the car was running uh, like crazy so that that was that i hopefully it doesn't really seem like any 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 dust or sand or what came into the engine since it was running great after we fixed that um, but uh, yeah hope, hoping for the best there so um, these are two wheel hubs that were actually uh, on the car um, when I raced it last Saturday. Um, so these are no longer on the car because I replaced them. Um, so this is actually a wheel hub that looks like it's uh, supposed to look. Um, it's a little bit tough to uh, to film it like this, uh, but you can see that um, by default there's a lot of uh, clearance between. Um, this clamp and um, this actually this stop. Um, what happens when I actually hit the uh, the Audi on the, on the impact is that the, the wheel hub that was on the car bent. So um, this actually caused this um, inner piece, this this stop, to come inwards a little bit. And I'm not sure if you can see it like this, but it's it's much more uh, much more to the inside. And there was no clearance to um, the boot of the drive shaft anymore, and this caused the clamp to come loose. And you can see that there's all this 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 dirt and grease in here. Um, so I just, fortunately, it doesn't look like any sand came into uh, to the CV joint. So I just um, put a new clamp on it, and it should be fine again. And lastly, the the final issue that um, I ran into is that for some reason, and I haven't figured out why this is happening. Maybe it's just because um, I haven't been using new wheel bearings, but I have been using old ones. For some reason, after racing, all my wheel bearings get play on them. And I always make, the sh make sure to verify that the axle is fitted correctly. So I'm, I'm not sure why this is happening, but um, for some reason, it, it's hard to see now, but there's a little play on this, on this bearing. And when you fit an actual wheel on this, you can actually sense that you can actually move the wheel a couple of millimeters. Um, so I just thought out of precaution, I replaced the wheel bearing on the left side of the car as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely a little bit different than the type of racing I do. I really like the dirt racing and I really enjoyed watching Rick rip around the track. He's going to possibly have some more races coming up in the future. So we'll try and get some highlight clips from that and continue seeing what this angle gear can do on the dirt. Till next time, guys.